What do you think of when you hear the word creativity? Is creativity evident in our classrooms and our schools today? In this ESU 8 Wednesday webinar, I hope to showcase some ways that we can foster more creativity for all learners in all of our schools. With a free set of resources from Apple called Everyone Can Create, you can see how this is possible on iPad or bring it to life on Mac or just employ the skills in a variety of lessons however you see fit. There's something here for everyone so that we can all create in order to learn. In the past, we would teach students how to create with a technology tool or device, but the shift is now in creating in order to learn. This is an important shift. It puts the students in the driver's seat. It empowers them to be in charge of their learning, to show what they know, to make their thinking visible, and to go deeper with their learning by that sheer act of creation. The ISTE standards encourage this. In the ISTE standards for students, we know that we are to drive our learners to be empowered, to be knowledge constructors, to be creative communicators and innovative designers among the rest of the standards. And in the Nebraska K-12 Digital Learning and Ed Tech Plan, in this first gear shift wheel in curriculum and instruction, there is a huge emphasis on creativity and innovation that's important for us as teachers. Educators online agree. In these social media posts, you can see that creativity is more than just the fine arts. It's more than just skills for students who have a certain artistic or creative aptitude. It's for all learners. It's a way to make learning deeper, more meaningful, um, and definitely help kids construct meaning from what they're learning about in school. I think my friend Cheryl here says it best when she says the passion to create is the fuel that drives learning. And if creativity is at the heart of what moves our world forward, how can we as teachers be the engine to jumpstart that vehicle? Well, enter in Apple's Everyone Can Create series. Um, recently released, it's founded on the idea that technology can unleash the creative potential in everyone. And these four free learner guides, as well as one free teacher guide, really highlight at a, sh at a high level the, the power of employing creativity in our learning. These are not just user manuals. Um, they're really um, beyond just giving kids an app and saying, be creative. This is really a scaffold to making that happen. The books focus on why it matters to be creative, as well as activities to practice that creativity. And that culminating teacher's guide is really um, including over 300 integration ideas in five curricular areas, math, literacy and literature, history and social studies, science, and coding. So I'm going to be your tour guide and give you a quick tour of these five Everyone Can Create books. Following that, I'll suggest some implementation ideas and actually show some of the newer features in the Apple apps that you can incorporate in your creative lessons. And then I'll leave you with a reminder to download the free resources today on Apple Books and get to creating with your students. So let's get started. Let's start with the Everyone Can Create drawing guide. The activities or chapters in this one include word art, doodle art, landscapes, portraits, still life, architectural design, logos, infographics, and book design. I'm going to show you the lesson on creating logos. Just some of the resources here. Some great graphics and terms and a design brief that you can download and use. Um, emphasizing communicating your message visually with shapes and color schemes and lettering, and some graphic design skills, and layout, balance, spacing, and obviously some great examples as well. So great lessons in the Everyone Can Create Drawing Guide. Next is the Music Guide. This one focuses on GarageBand for the iPad but it makes everyone feel like they can be a musician as well. It has some videos to inspire learners, activities with live loops, 
You can create a song by constructing um, some ready-made GarageBand files that you can download and edit. Rhythms and beats, chords and melodic instruments. And there's even some practice on writing and recording lyrics, personal narrative, um, developing new lyrics, so rewriting, remixing lyrics that are there. And you can take the song Can't Stop the Feeling and download um, the lyrics there and rewrite those and remix it as well. Post-production and some great things to make you feel like a musician in the Everyone Can Create Music Guide. Next is the Everyone Can Create Photo. And we know that everyone carries a photo uh, camera with them almost at all times in their pockets nowadays. So this guide actually teaches some really great skills to make your photos better on your iPhone, your iPad. Some activities like taking a photo walk, getting better pictures, personifying them, how to do better portraits, self-portraits. Um, there's silhouettes, different activities with them, with scenery, with action creating a collage. There's one with finding the letters in your name to photograph and then collaging them together in, in Keynote. Step-by-step -step screenshots and great examples. So this is a lot of the photojournalism. We go to more complex skills of publishing like posters and um, additional publishing projects like a photo book. And portfolio. And the Everyone Can Create video guide. We can better our video skills starting with Clips, which is the easiest app that any anybody could pick up and use instantly. Um, and then it works its way through um, different projects like silent movies. I like this one where you can see the different camera shots and camera angles and how to leave headroom or Frame your video scene properly, get coverage, close-up shots, and um, aspect ratios. Just, just really great videography skills um, for that inspiring cinematographer or anyone who wants to make a video project better. It progresses all the way into iMovie and um, creating a tutorial, a documentary film, a mobile report, and it concludes with a short film production. Writing a screenplay, designing your shots, mixing your audio, and creating that short film along with an example that can inspire students to try their own. Finally, let's take a look at the Everyone Can Create Teacher Guide. So you'll see some um, familiar projects. For example, when we click on the video chapter, then we'll see that first movie um, with clips. But then at the end of every project idea are those additional integration ideas. And here's examples for creating math riddles, um, using a reading reflection video in, in literature class, history lessons speak. Here's ideas for science, a collision lab video, for coding. And then the silent movies as the second project. And then at the end are all those integration ideas as well. So there are the four chapters that follow the four books, video, music, photo, and drawing. And that is a great resource to get started with tomorrow in your classroom. I'd like to show some of the new features available for being creative in the Pages app on iPad. So I'm going to open that here on my iPad. And first I'm going to download the teleprompter app option, which you can get to with any typed text in any document in Pages. You just go to the three dots on the top right, choose presenter mode. It's right down here in the orange button. And then you just tap to start the teleprompter. And it just auto scrolls for you. If you don't like the speed, you can speed it up by sliding your finger up or down. You can also tap it to stop it and start it. You can change the text size, the invert the colors if you'd rather have the teleprompter that way, and change the speed with the turtle and rabbit slider. 
and of course that just makes for an easy way to have a teleprompter available for speeches or for presentations or for actually movie scripts when you're recording with iMovie just use one iPad as the teleprompter. I'm going to get out of presenter mode here and show another feature that's available on the iPad in Pages and it's called Smart Annotation. Now if I tap my screen with an Apple Pencil it automatically knows that I want to either do a drawing down here in the bottom middle or Smart Annotation. And I can get to that without the Apple Pencil by using the plus menu and in the far tab which shows pictures go down to drawing. Again, Smart Annotation um, is the feature I want to demonstrate and that's where you go on top of the text. So with whatever color of pen you want, um, you can make marks on the text as well as a highlighter type of a mark. And any annotations that you do stick with the text so that if I are, am done with that anno, smart annotation mode and then I end up doing some editing. For example, I want to insert a couple of line breaks here. Notice that the highlighted text or the highlighted annotation stays with the text. It doesn't, it's not like on a separate layer and, and where the, the text moves, um, it actually stays with it. So it's pretty powerful for giving um, feedback, for proofreading, for just having students mark up and show their thinking as they're doing a piece of, of critical reading um, using smart annotation in pages on the iPad. I'm going to next go into a book. This is a new feature of pages as well where we can start um, actually a new document to show you that there are these books templates. There are portrait books that are usually text heavy and then these landscape books where you can build your own digital book or in the case of the, the one I'm going to show you here, um, I actually created a template for the students to then complete um, as they work through the pages. So this is an all about me book and Riley wrote her name here on page one. On page two she added shapes with the plus and then the shapes tab. She could find all kinds of symbols and then color them on the t-shirt design to show things that she liked. On page two she added a drawing again with the plus and then over to the picture tab, the last tab, and then in, um, a drawing to put her spaghetti and meatballs on her plate. Um, on page three she could type some text and then um, even really more powerful is the ability to add digital audio buttons inside of your pages documents and you just do that with the plus and then insert a record audio feature. You get this record bar across the bottom where you can hit the microphone, read your text or give your oral response, hit stop. Insert is on the top right now and that gives me a new audio button. All these move and place on the page wherever you want them to go and when we export this book as a digital book, as an EPUB, then those are playable by the, the reader just by tapping on them with their finger. On page four, the student could take a selfie. Here she is with her teacher. And um, another feature too that I wanna show is that you can format that picture. She already changed the opacity a little bit in order to help her trace it. And any image you can trace on top of with those drawing tools and try to make your own digital avatar. I'm gonna use the fill tool first here and just get a peach colored to fill her face. use the, the fill tool to get a shape to cover her whole face here and then we'll get some blonde hair so again the fill tool fills it as you draw which is really nice so as I draw around her hair and around her face it's also filling it as it's drying it. So when I let up, it's completely filled in. Of course, we can use the pen tool as well, um, change the thickness and the opacity, get some different colored ink for that. And draw on her additional features here. And we can make some beautiful eyes. And 
and maybe even feel a little bit like an artist. And then I can also use the fill feature to fill it after the fact. So if I just tap inside any closed space, it'll fill it then with a color. Let's put some circles inside of the eyes and let's change the thickness of my pen tool here. Get some eyelashes. Okay, there we go. Now, um, I'm gonna hit done on the top right. And now this drawing kind of is its own um, movable image. I can actually resize it. I can duplicate it. I can make a whole bunch of self of avatars if I want. And more importantly, I can delete the picture in the background so that it's just my drawing. Um, this is a new feature too. If we go up to the paintbrush, there's this feature to animate the drawing. So if I could turn that on, now I can hit play and I can watch it drawn back to me in the order that I drew it. So that makes for a really engaging experience when kids are creating digital books. Let's go back out to my books. And speaking of creating books, here's another one. It's kind of a combination of teacher created content and student created content, all in the theme of flowers. You can see that there's some text that I got from CK12 resource online, open source curriculum materials on plant classification that students could annotate and mark up as they critically read. They could um, move labels um, to match different parts of a diagram like this. Here's a couple of poems that they could practice reading aloud so they could insert that audio recording again. Let them be as flowers always watered. And then place their reading fluency practices on top of the pages, as well as putting their own text that they've typed or researched and um, adding drawings to those as well. So we'll do the plus, add the drawing, and draw our own little poinsettia here on the page about Shamrock Nursery so that when we export this book, we can have that drawing along to decorate our page. Um, again, with the plus, the three dots on the, the top right hand corner and then the export feature, here's where we get it to be an EPUB. It'll make the first page into the book cover for us. And when it opens up, it'll open up in iBooks, ready to read as a book. So you can see here that I would just open it in iBooks or books, and now it becomes its own digital book, our flowering creativity that I can read and interact with the pages and see all the great stuff that was created so easily. Um, there's my audio. Let them be my drawing. Another underutilized app is Numbers. It's not just a spreadsheet creating app. You can actually do content organization and help foster that creativity for your students when they're working. Here's an example of a science activity, science and math activity that measures the effects of sleep on the brain. So the students first have a learn tab where they can read some text and mark it up using the same features we were talking about in pages as far as annotating um, and drawing on top of, of the text. They can go to the think tab and they can move shapes into a graphic organizer and sort out their ideas. In the Predict tab, they can um, make some plotted points and then create a scatter plot with their partners to measure the effects of sleep on mood and then test out their reaction time with an app. Um, again, they could just type inside of the cells and then use the formulas in the spreadsheet app numbers to create um, calculations, but they, they wouldn't have to. This is just, again, an organizational feature um, that helps put an entire project or lesson in one space and helps kids manage that a little bit better. You can see this example as well from Mr. Morrow's science class where they did a backyard science sample count and they were able to um, put their team formation, read some background knowledge, keep track of their vocabulary terms, make some predictions, collect their data, measure the results, um, and then of course,
show their learning with um, a video at the end. Here's another example, a literacy-based activity where, again, there's a step-by-step -step set of directions and everything is organized in those tabs. What you do on top of the tabs could be a combination of drawing, photos, music, or video. So it really puts all the everyone can create um, skills into one context. And um, here's a vocabulary notebook. So just another way to organize your words and terms as a learner here. And I, I really like the ability to draw within a cell to make um, a picture to represent my thinking, but then keep track of it all in these nice organized columns or insert an image into the cell. Um, and then they can make their own tabs and collect their own words and even record audio of the pronunciation of those terms. So there's some great uses for numbers that are kind of outside of the, the everyday. So where could we use this in our classrooms, in our schools? Uh, I really think that the sky is the limit. Um, some ideas that came to me as I perused the Everyone Can Create learning series was in high ability classes where you're trying to stretch and encourage kids to go beyond turn them loose with one of the books and let them teach themselves. In blended learning in the classroom, maybe as a part of a station rotation, um, they could rotate through different activities or have one station be self-directed with the use of the Everyone Can Create series. I think that these guides would be great for a community engagement project where students could teach adults different skills with photography, with music, with drawing, or with um, video production on mobile devices. Definitely in a digital media or a technology exploratory class, um, but maybe not even in a traditional sense. In addition to, to teaching with the guides, you could also let students choose from them perhaps a, a passion project or a 20% time project based in one of the four areas that resonates most with them to truly personalize their learning and, and help them again extend beyond what their teacher knows or what they are familiar with already. I'd like to share with you um, kind of a closing message that was created by Apple Distinguished Educators around the world um, as a part of when they were asked what creativity meant to them and why it's so critical in today's schools. We believe every person can contribute something new. A tune, a design, an image, a unique point of view. It doesn't matter whether you are very young or very old. All humans have ideas and stories which must be told. Some people will deny they have this power at their core. But to be human is to make what wasn't there before. With the right tools, you have an unlimited potential to ideate. We believe in you because we believe Everyone, 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 everyone can create. Activity definitely needs a champion, and I believe that that champion is you. Each and every one of you. The classroom is where seeds of creativity are planted, and each of us just needs a little nurturing that can come from the Everyone Can Create guides. Feel free to learn more on Beyond this webinar by sharing your own reflections or searching for other people's favorite activities, projects, and ideas using the Everyone Can Create hashtag or tuning in to an Apple EDU chat on Twitter. And as always, feel free to reach out to me, Katie Morrow at ESU8, with any questions or project ideas that you would like an extra set of hands with. Good luck and happy creating.